What's up guys, now for a lot of you out there buying a pre-owned or used graphics card is probably the only option due to the excessive prices graphics cards are nowadays and for a lot of people it also makes a lot of sense because not only are you saving the planet, you're also going to save a little bit of money in your wallet. But what should you do once you've picked up your used graphics card? Well today we're going to go through the process of what we do here because most of the graphics cards we have in the studio were purchased pre-owned and we're going to be using this. Now for today's demonstration, we're going to be using this graphics card here. This is a GTX 1050 Ti that I recently picked up used. It was pretty cheap and it's not in the worst condition that I've ever had a graphics card. It's a little bit dusty, but I don't know the history of it. And I don't even know if it works yet because I haven't actually tested it. I'm just going to be using this graphics card to show you guys the process that we go through here to make sure graphics cards are in tip top shape condition before we start testing them or using them in gaming PCs. So hopefully it helps some of you out there know what to do with your graphics cards when they actually arrive. Now the first thing that I like to do with the graphics card when it arrives is give it a bit of a visual inspection. What we're looking for on a graphics card is that we're going to check the back of it, make sure there's no kind of burn marks on it, make sure there's no damage on it. Physical damage can sometimes be present on cards, but this one looks pretty clear. Everything seems to be on the back as it should be. Then I tend to have a look to see how dirty it is. So we're checking things like the fins on the fans is there anything broken is there anything cracked as long as they all look good everything should be good to go and then of course any cabling on a graphics card this one is a very basic graphics card so there's not a lot of cables on it at all there's just one here for the fan header which makes sure that they're not loose and that they're actually seated properly this one actually does seem to be in reasonably good condition there's no damage on it there's no marks on it sometimes you will get watermarks on the back so you need to be careful of that as well because if this has actually been sat inside a system underneath a leaky all-in-one cooler it could have had a bit of splashback on the back of it but this one actually looks pretty fine the other thing that i like to check out on graphics cards like this is of course on the back when you actually see the little screws that are holding the cooler and the card together you want to double check that the uh, warranty stickers are still there or not there in most cases this one has actually been damaged now if this wasn't damaged it would suggest that the card's never actually been maintained but because this one is damaged I would suggest that somebody has repasted this at some point so maybe we won't get any kind of temperature issues but we'll go through that process anyway once you've actually done the visual inspection and everything looks to be good everything's moving nothing seems to be out of place before you actually start doing anything else with this card in terms of taking it apart we need to make sure we get it tested Another reason we test a used graphics card before we start taking it apart and doing any kind of work on it is because we want to make sure it's working first. If the card doesn't work at all, then we can of course send it back to the seller and get our money back. But if it does work, we know that later on, if it doesn't, it's something that we've done. Maybe it was that we just didn't plug something back in or we didn't screw something down properly. And for that, we're going to be testing in our test rig. I've already installed the card here and it looks pretty cute to be honest in this massive case. It is just a GTX 1050 Ti so it's a very small card. It doesn't require any extra power cables and things like that. But when you do come to test these things, make sure you do check that up. Does the card or the power supply in your PC meet the card specifications? Because if it doesn't, it may not boot anyway and you'll think that it is a faulty card straight away. So make sure you check that kind of stuff and then start testing it. Obviously being installed into the system now, all we need to do is just turn the system on and see if we actually get a picture. There's going to be a number of things that could potentially happen here. Either we do get a picture and the card is detected by the system and it's generally kind of working to its basic needs or we get no picture at all. Now, if you don't get any picture at all, it could be a faulty card or your motherboard may slightly have an incompatibility with it. So you might need to reset your CMOS on your motherboard. It's always worth just checking to do that anyway, because you don't want to be sending a graphics card back to a seller that is an actual working graphics card. It was just that you didn't do that kind of process. So we'll just hit the button and we'll see what happens to this one. Now, as the system is booting up, you can do a bit of a visual inspection here. You can just double check, make sure that your fans are actually spinning. That does mean that Parrot is actually getting to the card. This one is spinning up. And of course, the monitor has now started to activate, which means that we're getting a picture. That means that this graphics card is actually working. Everything is plugged in. It's getting everything it needs. But there are some more tests that we actually have to do. The first thing we want to do is obviously test this graphics card to make sure that it will actually play a game or at least give it a bit of a benchmark. And of course, we need to make sure that the driver is installed. Sometimes on a card that is going faulty, particularly when it's down to VRAM kind of issues, the drivers won't install themselves. So what we'll do is we'll go grab the latest drivers for the GTX 1050 Ti and we'll get some kind of benchmark running with it. 
So the drivers and everything installed perfectly fine. There was no issues. It is running on the latest NVIDIA drivers for this card, which actually is still supported. So that's pretty good for anybody out there that does want a very budget card that doesn't require any extra power cables. That is one of the reasons why I picked this card up because I just really wanted to have a play with it and they seem extremely popular out there with budget gamers. The first test I like to run with the graphics card like this, just to make sure everything is working fine. It's just a very basic Unigen Heaven benchmark. This is 4.0, so the basic edition. It will allow us just to test the basic capability of the graphics card even though it is a reasonably old benchmark nowadays i wouldn't recommend using this to really actually truly benchmark anything nowadays but it will get the card nice and warm and that's one of the things that we're going to be looking for we'll just kick that off now and in the corner we're going to have our msi afterburner running one of the things that i'm really actually paying attention to more than anything is going to be those temperatures i don't expect very high temperatures with a gtx 1050 ti but it will actually show us any kind of issues that would be running with the card after we've left the test running for quite a bit so i'm going to kick this benchmark off we'll leave it running for about or at least we'll We'll get it to rotate a few times, so about five to 10 minutes, and that'll give us a good indication of the card's capabilities and its temperatures as well. So we've run the test a few times now and we've just kicked it back off again and as you can see the maximum temperature that it's got up to is around 55 degrees C that's actually not bad at all that means that the card is working and the cooling solution is working perfectly fine but I do want to actually take this card apart anyway because it is quite dirty and I want to clean it out so that's going to give you guys an opportunity to see what you have to do now because the way that this card is constructed we will have to remove the heatsink off there just to get everything else off so we're gonna to have to repaste it too that's not going to harm the card at all but at least we know now that it's working it's not the fault of the seller if it doesn't work it's going to be us breaking it but we're not going to do that because this is a very simple card to work on so let's go tear it down now we've showed you guys how to tear graphics cards down before and it comes with the same advice as this time every graphics card is completely different so it's always best to go take a look or do some searching on youtube to see if you can find a tear down video for the graphics card that you've got this one is a very basic simple design it is more or less just a layering of your cooling solution your heatsink and your card and to be able to separate all of this we first have to start with the four screws on the back now of course the warranty sticker is already missing off this one so we will need a screwdriver just to undo these screws and you simply just go corner to corner because these are the ones that actually add the pressure onto the die for the cooler and we just want to loosen them all off and take them out. Removing all the screws off the back should allow us to now separate the heatsink from the actual die itself. And it does appear that somebody has given this some new thermal paste at some point. I will remove the little cable for the fan system there. So that's going to be kept nice and safe. The card isn't in terrible condition. It's just a little bit dirty and dusty around the edges. And the thermal paste in the middle seems perfectly fine. I probably didn't really need to take this apart, but we're going to give it a clean anyway. The first thing we need to do is, of course, remove that thermal paste. I've got a new thermal paste for it, and for that we're going to be using Arctix MX4. This is just my go-to thermal paste, to be honest. It's reasonably cheap, and it's very good as well, so you can use pretty much whatever you want, but you do need to make sure you've got some of that. Don't take your graphics card apart without having any more thermal paste. You can get it out of your CPU coolers if you've never used it or anything, but if you do, you're not going to be able to put it back together again because you shouldn't use the thermal paste that was already in there. Now, to clean it off, I'm simply just going to wipe this away, and it's just going to remove it off the top of that die there. You can use some kind of solution like this. I've also got some Arctic Clean. Now, Arctic Clean just basically eats away at thermal paste just to clean it all off. You just want to give a bit of a dab onto the die just like that and then that will actually start eating away at it we just get our tissue and we're just going to give it a bit of a clean now it appears that somebody did use a lot of thermal paste here so we're going to have a little bit of a mission getting rid of it but if you do find there's a lot of thermal paste already on there what you want to do is make sure it's nice and clean so we're going to put a bit more cleaner on there and we're going to use something like a cotton bud cotton buds are very good for just cleaning away this stuff basically just want to keep working on it until you get rid of as much as you can going to be a bit of a messy job but we will get there so we'll just keep doing this until all of that thermal paste or at least most of it is actually gone now with pretty much all of the uh, thermal paste removed from the die itself you can see that it's pretty clean here but there is a lot of dust on the card around the edges so for that i like to use just a very dry paintbrush just brush the dust away some people like to use air blows and things like that it just depends on what you really prefer some people say never use a paintbrush some people say never use air or canned air but I just use a nice little paintbrush, release the dust off the card, make sure you don't knock anything else off, and basically just give it a little bit of a clean up. Just knocking this dust off will actually help thermals going forward because it means there's not going to be a big buildup of dust, and it also makes sure that your card smells better as time goes on. 
we'll just give the back a little bit of a dust too so we'll get rid of that kind of dust we'll give it off the side as well there's still a little bit inside the little nooks and crannies so we want to get rid of that make sure we get as much as we can and that's pretty much a decent clean card now of course we now need to move to the cooling solution itself now this isn't in bad condition you do need to remove the thermal paste off the back as well i've already given it a little bit of a wipe but i want to be able to make sure that i get rid of anything else that's on it so we want to get some tissue again give it a bit of a scrub because that way it'll make sure that we purify the surface and make sure that we get full proper contact again next time as we can see on the back here there is some kind of damage around where the screws have been that does mean somebody's been in here before but apart from that this thing is a layered construction again we want to be able to remove these fans off the top i'm not going to actually remove the fans themselves this time because i can actually get to everything but i do need to remove the plastic off the top to get to the nice little fins inside the heat sink so to do that on the back here we do have four screws we've got a very small screwdriver here so we'll just undo all of those screws with those screws undone we can just simply lift the cooler off and as we can see there's quite a lot of dust inside the actual fins themselves that will stop heat transferring to the air if we don't get rid of it so first thing we're going to do is we're going to move everything to the side and then we're just going to use the brush to nicely brush all of the dust out again this will make a little bit of a mess so it's probably better if you do it outside and not in a nice clean studio like i am but i do it all the time so i don't think we need to worry about it you just want to just basically keep going until all of the dust is out and everything's looking pretty clean you can also use compressed air for this if you really want to so you can get it out of any kind of nooks and crannies but generally it's not too difficult on things like this if you do do it to a bigger graphics card that has heat pipes and things like that you'll need to work around them and make sure you get all the dust off them but this is a very simple graphics card so we're not really kind of changing the world here with this one but it's going to just at least give it a little bit more life and make sure that it gets to its full potential, particularly in terms of performance. Now that we've actually cleaned the heatsink itself and there's no more dust on it, we're going to put that to the side and we're going to have a go at the fan system itself. You can remove the fans from these kind of things. They are just screwed straight in the middle there and you can get a little tiny screwdriver and remove them, but I'm not going to go to that length for this one. It's not in terrible condition. What I'm going to do though is just get the brush in there, make sure we get all the kind of... Uh, dust out of the system we'll get around the ring there we'll do it around this one we can kind of see the dust coming off maybe you should wear a mask if you're doing this and your graphics card's terrible condition i have had graphics cards much worse than this one i will admit and then on the back here we're just going to get into the blades give it a bit of a dust out just with this here and it should come up in pretty good condition now that we have all the parts actually cleaned and ready to go we will need to install thermal paste back onto this the first thing we'll do is we'll actually reinstall this cooler back onto the fan shroud itself we have to make sure that this goes the right way if we look at the way that the card goes around it kind of goes that way so i'm pretty sure we're going to be installing it like this that should line back up with the screws pop your screws back in and then we're ready to do our thermal paste when installing thermal paste back onto a graphics card this is not like a cpu we don't use a little dobbing technique here and expect the cooler itself to spread it out it will spread it out a little bit but what we want to make sure is that that complete die has coverage I'll just get my MX4 now and what you want to do is just put a bit in the middle. We don't need as much as the uh, previous people used. There was uh, quite a bit on this actual graphics card. And then you can get these little spatulas with your thermal paste. If they don't provide one, you can use pretty much anything, a piece of cardboard, a piece of plastic. But you just want to make sure that it completely covers that die in the middle there. Now this graphics card didn't have any kind of thermal pads for things like memory chips or... Um, VRMs or anything like that if you do have a little memory heatsink pads when you kind of take these apart you probably will need to change them too it's not always necessary you want to just double check the condition of them as long as they're nice and damp still and there's no cracks in them or if they're not torn apart you can pretty much get away with it but if you do have any damages on them you'll want to order some new ones and make sure that you get them fit too it's not as important of course as getting it onto the die here you can always take it apart again and replace them if you've forgotten but for now we don't have that problem with this card we've got some nice coverage on the die there of thermal paste so it's time to actually reinstall the cooler itself now as we install this we will we'll want to make sure that we plug the cable back in if you don't plug the cable back in your fans are not going to spin and you're going to get temperature issues so we want to make sure that that is plugged in just like that then the way that i like to do this is just place the card or the cooler on its back 
flip the card over and then lower it down until it aligns back with those screw holes. Taking the little screws with the springs on from the back, make sure you don't lose them because if you lose them you cannot reinstall this again. It means there's not going to be equal pressure across the die underneath. What we want to do is make sure that we Put one screw in one corner, take the second screw, put it in the other corner, make sure that that catches on the thread too. We don't want to put too much pressure on yet. Then we want to repeat for each of the other corners. And then once all the screws are in there, make sure everything's aligned nicely and then just screw down a couple of turns each corner so it goes down evenly. So we're going to go one, two on that corner, one, two on that corner, and we're just going to keep going until the screws pretty much bottom out. You don't want to put too much pressure on these, otherwise you can st stretch the, th the threads on it or at least crack the die if it gets too tight. So we're just going to keep going down until it's actually nice and settled on the cooler. And there we have it, a nice clean repasted graphics card that we've also tested. When you put them back together again, make sure you test them again, just in case you didn't plug something in or maybe you tightened something down too much or maybe you forgot to put a screw in there. Make sure everything is nice and set and stable. Put it back in the system, test it again with the similar kind of benchmarks, make sure those thermals are perfectly fine. And as long as they're good, you are good to go with your used graphics card. I hope those of you that purchase used graphics cards or anybody out there looking to purchase a used graphics card has learned something from this video. This is the process that we follow on all the graphics cards that come in the studio. So if you've watched our videos and you've watched us benchmark things and watch that little thing in the corner to make sure that they're performing well and that their temperatures are well, the reason for that is because they've gone through this process too. Remember to make sure that you test the graphics card first before you take it apart and do any kind of work to it because if you don't, the seller of the card may actually say that you've tampered and damaged the card itself and it may have not been a working card at all. But apart from that, once you've done this process, everything should look good. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. We do love doing these videos, showing you guys how to do different things or at least how we do things here for those of you that already know the processes that you use. This card is going to be used in an upcoming video so you won't want to miss that and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one